They're lined up. And that off. Five runners over the mile in the group two. Alan Smurf at Memorial Beresford Stakes. One last year by Luxembourg. It's Lakota seven on the outside of the favorite Adelaide River. As they race the end of the first furlong, climbing uphill. Bit of a break back to the maiden Young Island on the outside of Roaring Gallagher. And the back marker in these early stages, climbing up towards the sixth mark, is Crypto Force. It's Adelaide River and Wayne Lorden leading by half a length to Lakota Seven. And Declan McDonough with a break of three lengths to Young Ireland. And Kevin Manning disputing third place with Roaring Gallagher. And Shane Cross and the pale blue jacket with the back marker, Crypto Force. And Colin Keane. No changes coming down towards the halfway stage. Not a whole lot between Adelaide River and Lakota Seven. A little bit closer in third and fourth, Roaring Gallagher and Young Ireland with Crypto Force, last of the five. Coming inside the halfway stage in the group two, Alan Smurf at Memorial Beresford Stakes. And the leader is Adelaide River by less than a length to Lakota Seven, nudged along in second, two and a half lengths back to Young Ireland and Roaring Gallagher. Trying to come into it as Crypto Force racing on just outside the final two furlongs. And it's Adelaide River in front from Lakota 7. Coming right into it as Crypto Force, the purple jacket on the outside. Then Roaring Gallagher, relegated to be last of five as Young Ireland, racing towards the final furlong. And it's Adelaide River and Wayne Lorden on the outside. It's Crypto Force and Colin Keane. These two have the finish to themselves. And it's Crypto Force edging to the front from Adelaide River as they run up towards the finish. It's Crypto Force stepping up big time in the Beresford. Second Adelaide River, Young Ireland in third. Then Roaring Gallagher and last of the five, Lakota seven. Fantastic performance from Crypto Force. How much pleasure does that give you to see him bounce back from Ascot? Oh, massive. Um, obviously, delighted for Kia Jarabshin and Amor Racing because he's been a big supporter of mine this year and he's let me go out to the breeze ups and buy some nice horses. And, you know, they cost plenty of money. And I bought this lad myself and when he won his maiden, Tall Key was going to the London sale and to be fair to him he didn't force me to sell him at home and brought him to the sale and, and uh, he paid a lot of money for him so the pressure was very much on me from that point on. Um, it was a massive kick in the guts at, at Ascot but just it wasn't to be. Um, he just needed that bit more time and to be fair he's been very patient it's a hundred days since Ascot and I just wanted to wait and wait and wait and um, yeah look he's a, he's, he's a very exciting horse for next year. Uh, it doesn't do anything flashy at home uh, it just does what he needs to do. Um, but for him to come and do that in the race course and Colin said he'd probably better on fast ground I thought he wanted a mile and a quarter looking at his homework thought he wanted it already that's why I was happy to see just a bit of rain to make the mile a test um, Colin said he'd have no problem getting a mile and a quarter but on better ground he'd left that bit more pace he said he could be make up into a guinea's horse over the winter but we won't get carried away with ourselves yet he's gone and won that very well and um, we'll go back and sit down and talk to Kia and look Ideally, I would. He's that type of horse by time test over Galileo Mayer, and he's a he's from the family of Yumzain and horses like that. It'd be nice to just put him away, um, and and train him with next year in mind. But you know, he's he's got the job done today, and um, he's took a bit of pressure off me after him, after him costed so much to, to a man I owe a lot to, and um, del just delighted for him, and he deserves it because he puts a lot into racing. Fair play. I'm sure it sounds like you feel just that. Chesham run came a bit too soon after the debut. Was it always the plan to give him this much time afterwards? Um, after that, yeah, it was. Uh, Rossa came in and said, look, he's a nice horse. He ran a little bit green when he got bumped about halfway and he just dropped the bridle and he said he came home well, but he said he won't be a horse till the autumn and, and uh, we've just crept along slowly with him and kind of trained him with this weekend in mind. He was in the Royal Lodge as well. Um, but you know, we decided to come here just because you know his, his comeback run, and uh, thankfully we, we picked the right race from him. And um, you know, delighted. Absolutely. Had he been giving you the right signs in his pieces of work in the run up to today? He wouldn't set the world alight in the morning, um, but he's working with you know with pace here, six, seven furlong horses, more two-year-old types, and um, but you know that's the sign of a good horse. I haven't had I haven't had that many, you know. Usually we'd see it in the morning, but I haven't had that many good horses that you know. Just do enough at home and then go to the race course. So until they do it again like that today, then you can have confidence and know that's just him. Yeah. Um, so you know, we learned a lot more about him today. And, you know, he's just delighted to get today out of the way and the win the bars for him and, uh, you know, justifies now what P Kia paid for him. And uh, fingers crossed we'll have a, a horse for, for a, you know, he, ho hopefully he might make up into Group 1 horse next year. Thank you been running some lovely two-year-olds of late. You seem to be on a real roll in the autumn period. Are you excited about the few weeks left? Yeah, we have some very nice two-year-olds left to run. And two-year-olds actually, 
bit more backward than him. Even Rocco, the one in Punchestown, is, is a very nice horse and he wasn't ready to start before then. And there's a couple of others that I've just taken my time with that came from the later sales, the likes of the May Sale and Gore in, in Fairy House and th bought that type of horse because I had bought sharper horses, horses in the earlier sales. So the horses, funny enough, the way it worked out, the horses I bought in the later sales are, are for later in the year and nice big scopy horses. And, you know, generally for, for our business plan, they, you know, if they come out and they're decent and they, they go and do it, they tend to be, you know, a more valuable horse going forward for people. So. Well, Michael, a great day for you. Thanks for talking to us and congratulations again. Thanks, William. Thanks, Gary.